On today's episode, the Never Not Working segment, we're looking at some dynasty values, some really interesting start-sit decisions on today's matchups, the starts of the week, and of course, the Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. The saga continues. Subscribe to this channel, leave us some comments, and enjoy the video. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hi, this is Troy Polamalu, and you're listening to Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Please. <laughs> Please give us something tonight. I'm very concerned. For our well-being as we watch this matchup tonight. Going to need one of those ocular devices that hold the eyelids open. Yeah, the uh, uh, clockwork orange. Yeah. Get the drops ready. You need one of those to watch the Rams win? <laughs> no, no, I don't. That would be that here's, would be here's the thing. Perhaps they win. They could win ten to seven. That's the only way they can win. <laughs> that would be the only way. I'm not feeling great with the news this morning that Baker could start. It's we were or, talking or, before or the play. show. It's like, like it's not just start. It's like could play some. It's very bizarre. Like this whole entire situation of Baker traded or or not trade claimed by the Rams. That's not weird. But to have this whole song and dance very publicly, and it's very public for a reason. Like, the the Rams are, people in the Rams organization are sending these messages out that, oh, 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 look out, Raiders, we might play Baker Mayfield tonight. It's so bizarre that you, that I, I get how bad it has been with Bryce Perkins, but going to a player who got on your team a few hours ago and saying no you're going to you're going to start in prime time for us that's not the solution you don't know the playbook <laughs> the play calls the <laughs> system he's going to have a stick in the huddle <laughs> and he's going to be drawing <laughs> over okay, you go this way uh it's just it's going to be one look reads the entire night i mean it, i can't imagine it happening i mean Bryce Perkins so threw, threw for 100 yards in his start Right, so it's like, what's, so it's what's like, the what's, worst that can happen with Baker? Of, he throws for 100 yards? He, he threw for 100 yards and two interceptions. He got sacked three times. I guess that's what I think they're doing. And they said, uh, according to Adam Schefter this morning, that John Wolford would warm up and um, I guess see how his neck's doing. And then if he's able to play, he'll play. And if not, then it will be Baker, not Perkins. That's entertainment. Baker on a new team on Thursday night football. That's fair. That's that, entertainment. So we had, uh, you know, all the re the reports were resurfacing of, of how much McVay liked Baker in the draft process. Does Sean McVay actually hate Baker Mayfield? And he's like, you shall be sacrificed in front of the nation. Probably not. Yeah. I mean, this is... Uh, he's good. If Baker Mayfield starts... What's the over under on how many times he's sacked? Four and a half. I'll uh, set the line. No, I'll take the under. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he's sacked three times. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Yeah, no. This is um. This is the kind of the reason this is being leaked is because this is the kind of game the Raiders lose. It gets easier and easier in their heads to win the game. No Aaron Donald. No, no clue who the quarterback is. No Cooper Cup. No Cooper Cup. This should be easy. They've lost six straight. This is just – you want to know why it's being leaked. It's being leaked to soften the minds of the Raiders. Okay, perhaps. I, I think they should have gone with some uh, – Who are now seven-point favorites. They should have started leaking some Cooper Cup may return tonight. Well, that just, would do the opposite, right? That no, would, it's just – it's all I don't mental. think Mike's following this. It, it's because it's all dumb. <laughs> like, the fact that any of this is happening is ridiculous. We have a busy show today, Never Not Working, news and notes to talk about, including another quarterback change. Fantasy forecast on today's show, part one. We have the starts of the week. we got Jason's boom, boom, kicker saga, who, which is 
really moved past my intellectual levels. It's now on another plane where only AI-generated computers can understand what's happening. The intellectual level of today's boom boom is, I mean, the brow is high. What was the word last week? Kyle? It was blutterbunged. Thank you. Yes, Mm. yes. That tells you everything you need to know. Blutterbung, even though it sounds unsophisticated, is far too sophisticated for me. So I you're going like Kubrick on us. It's pretty impressive. So that'll that'll finish up today's show. Uh, before we get to that, it is time for some Never Not Working. Never Not Working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. So uh, today's Never Not Working. We're going to talk a little bit about dynasty values, players, uh, average draft position that has risen, fallen over the course of the year pretty extremely at a couple of positions. We'll look at quarterbacks who kind of stumbled as rookies and how their values have changed, and we'll look at some running backs that are heading into free agency. Uh, On Spotify Live yesterday, we had some dynasty questions coming up about players uh, trading what looks like maybe the first or second pick in the dynasty draft next year to go out and get a difference making player to help them make a playoff push, which what, you know, it's an interesting discussion and debate as to how you value the number one pick, the number two pick values in fantasy. They change a lot dynasty that is. And, you know, we've seen it. We've seen the big time stories. The Juju Smith Schuster was once the number you know, Not long ago. I mean, a top five. Oh, no, he was number pick. one. Was number one. So uh, it doesn't always go according to plan. And there have been some diamonds in the rough that, you know, people were ready to get rid of or move on and, you know, try to get somebody else. And then they end up being valuable. I want to look at some quarterbacks first who, look, it wasn't looking great for these guys. Uh, Trevor Lawrence was the quarterback 13 in Dynasty ADP. Justin Fields, the quarterback, 16. Tua Tungavailoa, the quarterback, 18. And this year, you have now Trevor Lawrence as a top 10 quarterback with seven top 12 finishes. Justin Fields is the quarterback, five. Like, completely reborn in dynasty leagues. Tons of draft capital for Chicago to strengthen this offense, offensive line. And then Tua is the quarterback, eight in points per game with the weapons that he has. How How is the landscape in your mind? the landscape in your mind changed for these quarterbacks when you compare them to dynasty darlings like Kyler Murray, Justin Herbert, uh, where do they slot in, in your mind? Yeah. I mean, you, you could make an argument, uh, for me, the number one of these quarterbacks would be Tua. Tua is young. He is set up for success with Waddle and Tyreek Hill. He's scoring a ton of fantasy points. I, I, I think his situation has such a firm foundation, you know. Fields obviously has had the highest ceiling on a on an individual level as a mobile rushing quarterback with a terrible defense. It has worked out great, but I don't know that his future is as predictably solid as Tua's. So I, th- those two guys, and and um, obviously Trevor Lawrence was drafted to be the greatest quarterback of all time, but he'd probably be my third of this list. But Tua's the clear number one for me. Is Fields number one for you among those three? It's close for me between Fields yeah. and Tua. It, it's very close for me as well. I, I think Jason's right. It's just like the way I mentally look at it is the range of outcomes for for these two guys it, where, where like that bar graph is just – it's smaller. It's safer with Tua. But those, those spike weeks, what Justin Fields has shown us being a top five quarterback in five of six starts, like that is – and and he barely ran this past week cuz I, I assume he's still dealing with you know a, a bit of the the injury he had just a few designed runs you housed another one and uh but you have to that while you have that upside you deal with the risk of Justin Fields getting hurt where Tua just feels pretty safe that you can say well he's going to be he'll be top 8 he'll probably be a, a top 6 guy you know i think Waddle and Tyreek are both top 5 in receiving yards right now has the 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 your the foundation Jason you're talking about like you have McDaniel there it's very safe for Tua but for him to turn into a like a uh, 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 Josh Allen Lamar Jackson ceiling uh, where you're like boom 
My quarterback, uh, the rest of my team sucked this week, but it doesn't matter because my QB put up 50 points. Like, that's that's not going to be the case for Tua. That's Fields. Yes. Okay, these are players drafted ahead of those three. Would you take them ahead of any of those three ahead of these guys? Kyler Murray. Oh, man. He's 25 years old. I'm not taking any of those three guys ahead of Kyler Murray. The It's very difficult because the I, the foundation around Kyler – if you're talking dynasty startup is shaky. Like what are, where are we with the odds that Arizona cleans house that very that, low, that GM Steve Kime is gone and Cliff Kingsbury is gone 20%. Yeah. I'm, I'm near there. I'm it for me. It's, it's rising. So I'd put it more at like 30 to 40%. That's which, called, that's called hope. <laughs> that's sure. As so an are you, fan. you're not taking Kyler over these guys. I, I think I still would, especially with the addition of of Hollywood Brown. So he's the players around him, but okay, uh, there could be some massive shakeup coming. How about you, Jason? Yeah, I I would take Kyler ahead of them. Justin Herbert, you're taking ahead of all three. I would as well. Uh, Dak Prescott's 29 years old. Do you take any of those three above Dak? I didn't know his name was in the doc. I was looking up a list, and he was the the guy I wanted to bring up as far as I I would take Tua over Dak. I take all three. I take all three. Yeah, over sure. I, I same. Deshaun Watson, I would take twenty-seven all, years old. I would take all three over Deshaun Watson. I would too. Uh, I would take Fields over Deshaun Watson. I don't think I'd take anybody else over him. Uh, unfortunately, I think everything's going to work out there for for Deshaun Watson in fantasy, and we can hope not. We can remember that he was, you know, he was the second highest points per game fantasy quarterback behind Patrick Mahomes. So, um. I think it'll work out for him. Running backs that came out of nowhere is the other dynasty category I want to look at briefly. Free agents in 2023, guys that look like they were potentially dead in fantasy, at least two of these guys. Josh Jacobs was the RB23 Man. off the board in dynasty startups. He's now the RB1 on the year. This is a free agent heading into next season. And then Saquon's gone from the RB11 in dynasty up to RB6 this year, has more opportunities than anybody both of those players are under 26 years old. I mean, their futures in Dynasty have changed tremendously, right? Josh Jacobs, I mean, I, the age looks like he, he'll get another contract and should be able to succeed, but that that is terrifying yeah, that if you're going to – where is he going to go? Will Will the Raiders bring him back? I Certainly possible, but he could just go get a bag of money for whoever is the highest bidder – doesn't care about the the situation of of the team and the fact that this year is such a massive spike compared to the rest of the career it i i think like if i had jacobs and i could trade on that that hope and that that hype i would probably do it i i think josh jacobs saquon barkley they probably get good three-year, four-year contracts uh, either from their same team or, or future teams, I, I think they're going to be fine for fantasy for a couple more years. But usually this is the time where you capitalize. Yes. Um, w even if they do get that bag, you could probably get more, a young stud up and coming running back plus a good pick for names like Jacobs and Barkley. And then Tony Pollard was the RB30 in drafts, now the RB2 since week six this year. Also very young. All three of those players, like I said, under 26 years old. I'm going to give you three older running backs, and I want you to tell me if you're interested in Jacobs, Barkley, and Pollard over them in a dynasty startup, and I'm going to put you in the middle of next offseason, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about happening today. We're talking before next season. Derrick Henry will be 29 <laughs> years old. Alvin Kamara will be uh, almost 28. And Aaron Jones will be 28 going on 29. Are you taking Jacobs, Barkley, and Pollard ahead of those three names in a startup? I'm taking Jacobs and Barkley ahead of those three names uh, just because of the age gap and Kamara's looming you know, s presumed suspension next sure. year that will take a chunk of an important year in the, the good age range for a running back away. All right, that will do it for today's Never Not Working. Always interesting to reflect on dynasty values. Always a good reminder to fantasy players, don't be too dogmatic about trades that take place in your league because values change very quickly. So collusions where you veto, 
Beyond that, let people make their own mistakes because those could end up not being mistakes. We've had countless trades where people are ruthlessly mocked and they flip the other direction pretty quickly with the emergence of a player. You know, if you saw Tony Pollard traded last offseason, his perceived value was very, very different than his actual value this season. Keep that in mind as fantasy players and good managers. And it's it's funny because it's it, dynasty leagues are just the, the mentality you have of this is my forever roster. Like because I we don't have the startup again. I the only way I add players is through a trade or through the rookie draft. So it just it your long term outfit, uh, long term outlook on these players. It just it, you feel more locked into these guys, and even though that it's still dynasty. The value of a player can change in literally one week. One injury happens, and these guys go from like the running back thirty all the way to a top twelve player. It it the values change fast and furious. So so like Andy's saying, don't get too hung up in where a player is today. If you, especially if you believe in a player, you can also have a and I'll give Mike credit on a trade he did this year. His champion Antonio Gibson. If you are Oh, if man. you are, you know, it was you, so sad. If you have players on your team that you had a vision for, right, and the dream, and you saw the future, and you get an alternate universe that is not as good as that future, <laughs> it is very hard to trade those players at a lower value, even when it's necessary. You don't want to be left holding the bag on Clyde edwards alaire Mike moved Antonio Gibson in a couple weeks of uh, when he was playing well to acquire Garrett Wilson. Uh, that's correct, right? It was it was preseason. It was pre. Uh, yeah, it uh, was probably after the. It was Robinson after the Brian Robinson gun. incident. That's right. That's right. And so, um, rather than hold on to a former view of Antonio Gibson's rest of his career being Christian McCaffrey, moving on, securing better players, very important. A reminder: get up to one hundred percent dandruff protection that is never not working with Head and Shoulder Scalp Seal technology available at Walmart dot com. Use it every time you shampoo to see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Dolphins wide receiver Jalen Waddle limited Wednesday with a leg injury. Tua Tungavailoa also limited with an ankle injury. It's a Sunday night football game. I don't think that either guy is missing that game, but if you want to ensure and wait for Jalen Waddle, you could pick up Trent Sherfield sure. as an emergency start. Yeah, I, I think both of these guys are going to play, though. Mike Williams returned to a limited practice, also part of the Sunday night football game. Oh, man. Is his uh, – <laughs> let me put it this way. Does his activity this week – is it d does it determine anything you do with the other players on the Chargers? It, it can move Palmer from someone that you're for sure starting to someone that you still can start, but you might have a better option. That's, that's about it. I'm not going to start Mike Williams in the first game back considering he re-aggravated – this in his first game back originally um and I'm not moving Palmer straight up to like I must bench him because Mike Williams is back I think Palmer is still a, a decent start this week Traylon Burks didn't practice due to the concussion I would consider him on the doubtful side of questionable agreed Trevor Lawrence didn't practice with the toe expects to play this week says quote that's the plan Stan <laughs> well I threw in that uh, you part, added the yeah, Stan part yeah. but it made it a lot cooler so we expect Lawrence to play. Yeah, as, yeah. Of, as of now. Cortland Sutton, doubtful. Hamstring injury. So The matchup is so good against the Chiefs. They have been bleeding total points and yardage to quarterbacks and wide receivers, but the matchup is so bad uh, for, for the, Jerry Judy, the matchup against Russell Wilson. Right. <laughs> He's uh, facing off against Russell. Yeah, I mean, they're going to, you know, it's like, oh, man, I'm open, but can you Judy and Dulcich, get, the, get me the ball? I think are both playable this week. I do, too. Yeah. Kadarius Tony returned to a limited practice. Uh, he is one of 600 different Chiefs receivers that could get the ball this week. Seattle running back situation. Worth a quick conversation. Kenneth Walker didn't practice. DJ Dallas didn't practice. Travis Homer was limited in practice. Okay. Travis Homer was limited on Friday. Couldn't get back in time to play and be active on Sunday. But it's worth noting that Travis Homer was playing the majority of the backup snaps behind Ken Walker ahead of DJ Dallas. So if he's active, he's going to have an opportunity, assuming Walker, Dallas, 
and company are out. Yeah, it's still early in the week, but if you had to you know, place a bet, it's certainly going to be on Travis Homer to be the starter. And if he is active while DJ Dallas and Kenneth Walker are inactive, he, I think he's actually a, a pretty good play for fantasy. And then you just have to keep an eye on him because he, he wasn't able to play last week, even though he got in a limited part, uh, participation uh, late last week. If he doesn't go, Bruce Wayne Gallman would be the next man up. Or Tony Jones. Who's also healthy. Fair. Uh, Deonta Foreman didn't practice on Wednesday with the foot. Head coach Steve Wilkes, this is uh, Carolina Panthers running back, Deonta Foreman, says he's not too concerned about Foreman's foot, but not sure if he's going to practice. But then Foreman said he's 95% confident he'll play. The, these Wednesday's not the best sometimes for these injury reports. Especially later in the season. As soon as you get to the midway point in the season, Wednesdays are off days. Re recuperation days. Yeah. Uh, Desmond Ritter has been named the starter for the Atlanta Falcons. Here we go. Things were going so according to plan for head coach Arthur, uh, I almost said Arthur Blank, <laughs> Arthur Smith, that he decided to make a quarterback change. I mean, the, this was something we were kind of talking about since the beginning of the season that at some point they almost have to see if Desmond Ritter can play. Was he a, uh, uh, Kyle third rounder? Yeah, he was the second quarterback drafted. So he was drafted in the third round. They're, I know that the plan is always to win, but they're a team that's uh, rebuilding. In a, they're, they're not completely at the bottom, but they have a lot of work to do. And that includes seeing if you have a franchise quarterback that you spent a day two pick on, and you got to put him out there and help it dictate what you do with your first-round pick coming up this year. Fortunately, you know, you can't really be worse at supplying fantasy value to wide receivers than Marcus Mariota was. Yeah. But you can but make no mistake, you can be just as bad. Yes. I've seen a lot of people since this news broke on Twitter talking about how Drake London's gonna be so much better. Obviously a change could be better for him, but this is no guarantee that a third round rookie quarterback coming in is going to be good. We we've been talking about Kenny Pickett, um, and the fact that he is he's a rookie quarterback. These guys don't usually support quality wide receivers in fantasy football. Josh Jacobs questionable for tonight expected to play. And then we got word that Baker Mayfield expected to be active tonight. Multiple uh, verified sources confirming Man. that there's a real chance he plays tonight. And it depends on the John Walford uh, practice before the game. It, later on in that tweet, Mayfield got in Tuesday night and is up to speed on the full game plan. So he, he got to his team. Tuesday night. He had all Wednesday, though, Mike. <laughs> the morning, noon, and night. We're talking a wake-up and go-to-bed day on this team. Which so, is all it takes to get up to speed. Right, for playing quarterback in the National Football League, the easiest position in all of sports. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that literally means you had a day to get up to speed, and they're saying you did it. His uh, little arm uh, <laughs> band <laughs> It's going to be like the old centerfold fold outs. It's just going to be this giant. Oh, wait, like you pull it out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's going to be staring at that thing right before. He's just looking at what is this play? Can they, get, can they get one of those footballs that has the plays on the football? <laughs> yeah. Because I yes. use that with my son. Yeah. All right. We're going to do number seven. Okay? Yeah. Everyone do a seven. Oh, shoot. I'm holding that upside down. Look. <laughs> Or it's just, it, it will be the same play. See, this it's is same. why tonight's going to be fun. It, 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 honestly, How can you possibly be rooting for John Wolford to start this no game? No way. It's, when it, it's three and out, three and out, three and out, that's not, it becomes not fun. I, I, I'm, I'm with Andy. If Baker Mayfield starts, this is going to be great fun. Because, it, I mean, for, you're telling me he doesn't Barnum throw a pick six? <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Saturday taught me I could be a coach, and Baker's going <laughs> to teach me I could be a quarterback tonight. It's going to be great. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by our friends at USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break, and then we're back with the fantasy forecast. There's a chance Baker Mayfield really moves up my ranks tonight. You know, gets me that almost upset. Oh, there's going to be so much moxie tonight. Oh, yeah, he's got a lot of moxie. Oh, so much. Get some more commercial deals, things like that. I think there's going to be a lot of dump-offs. <laughs> it's like every play, just have a guy leak out where I can throw him the ball two feet from me. Sure. Yeah, makes sense. Cam Akers, I hear what you're saying. Uh, here we go. 
Fantasy Forecast. All right. We are into the Fantasy Forecast. Six teams on by. I can't name them all for you. But if uh, if they says buy in your platform, don't play them. Don't play them. The New York Jets are seven and five. Buffalo is nine and three. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Buffalo minus nine and a half. The over under is forty three and a half. What do we expect from this game? In Week Nine, we saw the Jets defeat Buffalo twenty to seventeen. And uh, you know this game is in Buffalo. That was a Zach Wilson game. It was uh winner, Zach Wilson. I think it's going to be a pretty competitive game, but the you know, the Vegas line has the Bills with almost twenty seven points, the Jets just with seventeen. Yeah, I was really surprised at the nine and a half point spread considering how good the Jets defense has been and how um human Josh Allen has looked over the last month. It does look like there's a chance of having some snow here, sixty three percent chance of per- precipitation is what I'm seeing and uh, <laughs> going to be very very cold so that could play a factor in the uh, passing game it's not going to really affect whether or not you start Josh Allen or Stephon Diggs or uh, Gabe Davis I guess Gabe Davis to me is a flex level guy where this matchup is brutal against the Jets the Jets have been number one uh, on the season adjusted for schedule against wide receivers and quarterbacks um, the one player that that might scare me off of is Gabe Davis. Well, and, and it's the exact opposite for Buffalo, believe it or not. They, they've given up more fantasy points to wide receivers than almost anybody in football. 12 more than the Jets give up per game. Fine, I'll start Garrett Wilson again. <laughs> but what about making that decision between a Corey Davis and a Gabe Davis? Like oh, Davis man. v. Davis. I think uh, you've got to go Corey. Corey Davis did not practice Wednesday due to illness, so that is that is something to monitor, whatever – the, the the illnesses going around uh they've been all over the place of either keeping someone out even with, when they miss on Wednesday or they're perfectly fine so monitor the practice reports on there but Corey Davis quietly again he just keeps producing for fantasy and with 10 targets last week the fact that Mike White is given the opportunity at least to sling the ball around you know two straight games with over 300 passing yards uh, I think that Corey Davis is in play, and I would personally play him over uh, uh, over Gabe Davis. The situation right now with Mike White, in five starts, the Jets have averaged 76 plays per game with Mike White. You're getting after it. So you do, like Jason's talking about Garrett Wilson, um, it's hard not to be in his camp again this week. Oh, yeah. Gar- uh, Garrett Wilson – is pretty much an absolute must-start rest of season unless something happens to Mike White. Yeah, and he he is so explosive that you can have the 200-yard type of games from Garrett Wilson. He was a a fingertip from being well over 200 last week. And you can also have the games where half, three-quarters of the game look bad, and you're pretty disappointed you started Garrett Wilson, but you can still have hope in that fourth quarter because one play – he can make a week, and um, he's done it pretty much every single game that he has played with, not not just with Garrett Wilson, just without was Zach, Zach Wilson. Wilson. Oh, Every game oh. that Garrett Wilson played with himself? Okay, that's what I that's was how hearing. It sounded. I got yeah. very confused. Which he's been good in all the games he's played with himself. Him, that's Well, that's not true, because sometimes he's played with himself and Zach Wilson. Hmm. <laughs> Whenever Zach Wilson has started, <laughs> Garrett Wilson has not been very good. All right. What, how, how do you look at that situation for Dynasty? I think it's worth a, a brief detour because what you said is Where's absolutely Garrett? true. Joe Flacco, Garrett Wilson was amazing. Mike White, Garrett Wilson was amazing. The reality is Garrett Wilson is amazing. That's the, yes. that's the underlying statement that is 100% true. But the future of this Jets team, I can't imagine it doesn't involve some Zach Wilson. It, I think it, it could. Ha- I think it has to be Mike White if they make the playoffs. And right now, it appears that their trajectory is towards that. They're in right now. I expect them to lose this week, so maybe they fall out. But they've got a couple winnable matchups the rest of the way. I currently project they're in the playoffs. If they go to the playoffs with Mike White, I think you have to trade Zach Wilson in the off season. I I, th- I think I find that hard to believe. That means what do you you think Mike White's worthy of a long term deal with I, the Jets? I, I do. I you know I talked to Mike a while ago. He reminds me of Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins was 
the quarterback drafted in what the fourth round when they I think it was fourth round where they drafted Robert Griffin the third and he was their their star their future but it just turned out that they got a really good draft pick later they saw him at practice they go man this guy's good and when Robert Griffin got injured they they just didn't go away from him. So playing Minnesota and Chicago, he was the quarterback six and seven the past two years or two weeks. But this is an on the road divisional game against the Buffalo defense that, you know, looked better last week than mm -hmm. we had seen. Is this a situation where you are not chasing a Mike White stream? Correct. It, yeah, it it's it's full cowardice hedge, but it's like I wouldn't play Mike White this week. I'm just watching, and despite playing but, Garrett Wilson, and but I'm but fully expecting that Mike White will have a perfectly fine game, and then I'm I'm using this more of as a uh, a barometer check of Mike White have get some success in this game. I think that will be huge for not only him but the coaching staff's belief that we're we are moving forward with Mike White, and then the matchups the next couple of weeks are are pretty juicy for him so it's just it would give me the confidence for next week we talked a lot about Devin Singletary James Cook in the mailbag on yesterday's show so I don't want to spend forever here we got oh, a lot of matchups to get through but just give me the name of who will be better <laughs> yeah I mean a lot of people with Singletary probably have Cook you have to make a decision this week if it's my team I am leaning the Cook side this week I would start Cook over Singletary yeah that's, I think they are both playable and if I had to choose one I'd go James Cook and then I think we're moving away from Dawson Knox and Tyler Conklin in streaming contention correct the Cleveland Browns are five and seven they take on the Cincinnati Bengals who are eight and four the DraftKings Sportsbook line Cincinnati minus six the over under is 47 points a rematch from week eight divisional game Cleveland won 32 to 13 in fact Joe Burrow is 0 and four against the Browns lifetime I think he rectifies that this week. This game is payback for the utter humiliation of that Halloween night game where the Bengals were just completely undressed by the Browns. This game is at home in Cincinnati. The Bengals have been playing very well. Their passing game is working. It, we don't know for sure whether or not uh, Joe Mixon will be active, but he certainly projects to be active, practiced in full on Wednesday. So... I, I'm I'm all in on the Bengals. I, I really love the options. There's not really a Bengal that I don't want to start. What are you doing with P. Ryan? P. Ryan, to me, is a, a low-end flex if Joe Mixon is active. I think he'll still be involved. I don't think that Joe Mixon is going to come in and see 75% of the carries first week back from concussion. I am probably in the minority based on our conversations earlier, but I am also not playing Tyler Boyd. Um, he's been far too – he's had far too low of a floor for me to feel comfortable with Tyler Boyd. They will likely be without Hayden Hurst, so Mitchell Wilcox will get the start at tight end. Not really an option you could look at. Only had one catch last week. Hey, Hayden Hurst is the reason that I'm okay looking Boyd's direction. Yeah, same. Last week against the Chiefs, Boyd was four for 60 – uh, which that on the surface is terrible, but you add in a egregious touchdown drop that Tyler Boyd makes that catch 99 out of 100 times. We just happened to see the one time that he drops that ball. You add in those yards and a touchdown. Tyler Boyd had six for 75 and a touchdown. Would have had a, a great game. So I'm I'm still willing to go back to Boyd. Deshaun Watson completed 55 percent of his passes last <laughs> week. <laughs> We need a bad version of 55. Yeah, I just <laughs> gave it to you. Uh, third worst in expected points per play in week 13. I think we expected there to be rust after 700 days of not playing football, but facing a, a pretty formidable Bengals defense on the road, I'm not sure the rust falls off this week, which puts you know anybody but Amari Cooper in the passing game in extremely risky territory yeah yeah i uh donovan uh people's jones has been a very solid play this year but i'm not looking his direction until we know that uh, Voldemort has knocked the rust off so the amari cooper he had enough targets uh i'll i'll throw him in the lineup he's been great this season even though this is a road game 
uh, with the quarterback change. He's not, to me, an absolute must start, but he's probably better than your, your other options on the bench. Obviously, Chubb is in, and Kareem Hunt, to me, is out. Yeah, Kareem Hunt has just not been – I mean, last week you did see 12 opportunities, which is his first double-digit attempts since week eight, but the game was – you know, it was well in hand, and it's not going to be that way this week. Yeah, he would – be on the bench is is Deshaun Watson completely out in terms of a yes. streaming candidate yeah, for you? He is he is out. I get it that he hasn't played in forever and he's going to be rusty, but to look that bad against the Houston Texans with all the knowledge that we have of of how terrible that defense is, I mean, it it, it would be shocking to me if Voldemort looks anything good in this matchup. Yeah, I would start Tyler Huntley over over Voldemort personally. The Texans, you just talked about them. They're one ten and one, and they take on the Dallas Cowboys, who are nine and three. This game's in Dallas. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Dallas minus seventeen. It just keeps going up. The over under is forty four. <laughs> that gives Dallas thirty one points. The Texans fourteen. The line's literally moving right now. It keeps getting. Oh better. man, is it always running? It's like just keeps going up, like hour over hour. Yeah, it's going to get to 20. Well, right now we have Brandon <laughs> Cooks and Nico Collins not practicing. Uh, that's probably why it's moving. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a a start from Almost Houston. upset of the week. I'm going to give you a <sighs> that's no, I, I no. was holding my breath no. like because I when he started saying this I was like, "Oh my goodness, no." I'm going to give you a a desperation start at tight end right now. And it's Jordan Akins of the okay. Houston Texans. He's actually had a couple of top 10 performances in the past uh, four weeks. Last week, six targets. Like I said, Nico Collins and Brandon Cooks are not practicing. Brandon Cooks did not play last week. You still have to play four quarters. They run him out in a lot of these little shallow, worthless PPR type of routes. So in a full PPR, I would not be surprised if Jordan Akins has five catches in this game. Just throwing that out there for sure. you. Sure. Damian Pierce. Do we get some. Do we get some Philip Dorsett action? I mean, no. You get yeah. him running routes. That's that's what I mean. Oh, that's his action, just yeah. running the routes. Yeah, it's just it's fun. Be like, hey, Philip Dorsett. What is the uh, money line on Dallas? Oh, last I saw, is it negative eight hundred? No, or something? last I, I saw mean, was minus fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. <laughs> it's now at minus eighteen hundred. Oh <laughs> man! If and and Fuglan, if you don't know what that means, that means if you want to bet that the Cowboys win this game and you want to win just I don't know hundred bucks. You would have to bet one thousand eight hundred dollars. Don't do to it to see a hundred dollars. It might be worth it. No, it, those those bets are never worth it. But uh, <laughs> you know the the, the problem with oh, meeting man. expectations here is simply Dallas kind of meandering into this game without taking anything seriously. Um, I don't think they have to. I think that with, with the way that the offensive line is playing, the way that the running backs are playing, and the defense, they. They they could they should have just not practiced. Just rest up. Well, the defense is unbelievably great in terms of starting them this week. You don't expect a lot from the passing game. CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup. Like and Lamb's always in your lineup. Dak, you can play him, but but we said this yesterday, like they've given up like twenty one points as a peak number for quarterbacks this year. Houston. Not because they don't they're they're a great defense, but because the nature of the game, the defense could score, or you get short fields, right? You you turn the ball over on the forty, and it's like one for seven for Dak on the drive, and a running back runs it in. It's just not been an equation that works for quarterbacks this year. So just bear that in mind. Not that you would bench Dak, but I would play Cousins. I would play Goff. I'd play Trevor Lawrence. I'd play a number of quarterbacks ahead of Dak just because of what we talked about on Ride or Die yesterday. They're so bad that they're good. And then uh, Dalton Schultz, you're going to play him as your tight end. I saw some people saying, sure. hey, uh, you don't have Hunter Henry ranked really high. I'm trying to decide between Schultz and Hunter Henry. I Man. mean, that's, that's, that's Schultz. That's Schultz by a lot. I yeah. mean, it, he's your guy. Yeah, I would play Schultz, but I, I mean – that is, an like area, that is an area where the Texans defense has given up fantasy points, at least. Yep. They are 27th in the league against tight ends. Moving on, I mean, I, unless – play Zeke, play Pollard, play yeah. Lamb, sit Gallup, 
play Dak if you need a safe number. Play another quarterback if you need a big number. Yeah, it was so well said. Minnesota's ten and two. They go to Detroit. This is it. They take on the Lions, who are five and seven. This who is are the favored. This is the game and should be. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Detroit minus two. The over under is fifty two. You know, Minnesota has been a by the skin of their teeth type of team this year, including last year. One Braxton Berrios catch in the game is different yet again. They are winning all of their one score games this year because they're nine and zero in them. Nine and zero in one score games. That's ridiculous. Uh, where Detroit's three and five. Like you talk about flipping the division. Minnesota loses three of those games. Detroit wins another one or two in this game. They're like tied in the division. Yeah. So um, this was a game Minnesota barely won, twenty eight to twenty four in week three, where Justin Jefferson went three for fourteen on six targets. Oh yeah, I remember that game. <laughs> that, was, that was bad. But Detroit. They've been on a roll. Mike's start of the week is Jared Goff. Yep. Which we'll get to later on in this show, but it's a spoiler alert. Jared Goff has been spoken of already in the streaming uh, section of the show, and he's got 17 touchdown passes in seven games at home. Yeah, he's been great. I think you could fire up Kirk Cousins on the other side. You're not going to get quite the same ceiling out of Kirk Cousins, I don't think, that you can get out of Jared Goff. But if it was Kirk Cousins or Dak, I would rather take the chance of a shootout potential game where Kirk has to throw it, has a good matchup, and might have his first explosive game. I would play Cousins over Dak. And then you have Dalvin Cook and DeAndre Swift. No questions about Cook, but the Lions run defense has been the second best over the last six weeks. Cook is so involved in the passing game, too, that you know, I don't. I wouldn't be terrified of this with a high over under fifty two points, but DeAndre Swift, fifty one percent of snaps last week, twenty opportunities. Has the time come, Mike? I see your face. It says, "Let it be the time. Uh, let it be the time for Swift." The 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 face is definitely let it be the time, but the face is it is Wednesday, but it's a different animal because this is DeAndre Swift. But but Swift was back to a limited practice on Wednesday and. The, the the fact that last week it was the first time uh, since week one that he had been completely off of the injury injury report and that translated into the most we've seen Swift basically since week one. We, we have to hope that this is simply management because he got so much work uh, uh, this past weekend and he will be a full practice on Thursday. I don't think that we uh, – we'll see if we can track down that information. I don't think – I we just can, looked. It's not out yet. Yeah, we, we can't get it just yet. Uh, if he is but, a full practice but by on all Thursday. Accounts, uh, by all accounts, it we it, it should be DeAndre Swift time. Like, he's he's back into his role, which this is his role. Like, I'm not I – mean, we should not be expecting, oh, DeAndre Swift, get him up to that 65% of the snaps. Give him the, That's not going to happen. His body is, is made of – of like chewed bubble gum. Like it just breaks down. But when he's out there, he can be very, very effective. So give us 50% of the snaps, give us 15 to 20 opportunities, and you should get fantasy goodness. Jason, let's talk about the secondary receiving options in a game with a big over-under that we're expecting to be a fantasy bonanza. Jefferson is a lock. Amon Ross St. Brown is a lock. He's been electric. Um, I saw a tweet. Ian Harditz came out and said, you know, last 17 games, the numbers, 167 targets, 127 receptions, 1,500 yards, 12 touchdowns. Yeah. Amon Ra is a PPR monster. But when you look at Adam Thielen since the emergence of TJ Hawkins and the arrival, and you look at DJ Chark, Jamison Williams getting snaps now, are there players who are willing to take some dart throws in this one in terms of secondary options? Yeah, DJ Chark, I think, is a is a really good option. The I agree. matchup uh, across the field is perfect for him. The game environment with an over under that's fifty two points is perfect. Uh, the you know, the fact that the Vikings are better against the run than they are against the pass. I mean, obviously Amon Raw and Justin Jefferson should explode. They could be the number one and number two wide receiver on the on the week. But to me, when I look at the secondary options, it's DJ Chark and TJ Hawkinson. TJ Hawkinson, I wanted to be my start of the week, but I felt like it was like, who is not going to start TJ? I know he had a bad week last week, 
but this is revenge game. He's going home to Detroit where he's played his whole career and 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 they love him there and he loves playing there and they can't guard tight end. So TJ Hawkins is, should be an awesome play this week. Anybody else from this matchup you want to mention? Jamal Williams, is he still in your lineup? Uh, I mean, you know he's getting a touchdown. <laughs> it it seems like it cannot be stopped. It is inevitable. Um, but the I mean the emergence of Swift definitely lowers the probability. But it's still at a point where I would bet Jamal Williams is going to score a touchdown or more. Yeah, they have a a real knack at getting dragged down on the one yard line. They're great. If at you it. notice, yes, that. like mm -hmm. every game you watch it, and you because you say that the right when they get tackled, you go Jamal. Yep. Yeah. You know what's happening, and he's excellent at it. But it's like, it is. He is it's a little bit like Connor last year. He he is succeeding because of the circumstances he is given. Like he's not the one who's carrying the offense, but between the twenties down to the other side of the field, thirty-five rushing yards, sixty-six, sixty-four, fifty-nine. Like those are very pedestrian numbers. But the fact that the pass catchers they are. They love the the one yard line to go down there, and Jamal Williams is so good. I'm going to stay in that fire. Philadelphia is 11 and one. They travel to New York to take on the Giants, who are seven four and one. The DraftKings sportsbook line here: Philly minus six and a half. The over under is 45 and a half. This one is really really interesting to oh, me. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, this could be a, a a playoff clinching win for Philadelphia. Not that anyone's expecting them to not make the playoffs, but they could clinch it this week. The Giants are the sixth seed, and uh, they have a bit of a, a gauntlet down the stretch to try to get into the playoffs. The one area where the Giants are still stifling fantasy production is the quarterback position. Uh, they are giving up 15.2 fantasy points per game. Jalen Hurts is always in your lineup. Do you have any tempered expectations, or do you believe he will be able to do what he does? I, I don't really have any tempered expectations in in this game. I mean, it's not as great as if you were playing the Minnesota Vikings, but Jalen Hurts has done it in pretty much all kinds of different matchups. So I, I expect him to go out there, score 25 fantasy points, and ha have a good game. Now, whether it comes – through the passing game or the running game is going to be determined based on you know whatever game plan that they come up with and and that the Giants come up with uh the Giants have not been great recently against wide receivers tight ends I think I see uh you've got a start you like in this game this week and I, I like him quite a bit in Devonta Smith he he's just been on fire since since Dallas Goddard's been gone his yeah his targets per game are elite. Are you staying in the, the flames with, with Darius Slayton? I mean, it's really hard to do that. You see Isaiah Hodgins emerging. You see Richie James in the short area. Top 24 in five of eight games. Yeah, and, and it comes down to the big play. And my concern is, is will he be able to pull off the 40, 50-yard jump ball that he's been pulling off uh, in this matchup against the Eagles? And I... I guess I lean a little bit on that. I'm I'm hesitating. I mean, you look at his long catches, 55 yards last week, 44, 54 two weeks before that. That's his kind of recipe for success, and I'm I'm nervous. Slayton or the spot starter, Zay Jones. Zay Jones. Okay. Slayton or DJ Chark, very similar archetype, different Ooh. matchup. Um, I guess this week I will go with DJ Chark. I go. I, and I'm a, I'm well. a pretty big like supporter of Darius Slayton. Yeah. I just don't like the matchup. I will mention if you're looking deeper on the Philadelphia side, I don't know what the most recent practice report is, but I think there's a pretty good chance Quez Watkins is missing this ball game. So when you look beyond the top two receiving options, whether the the running backs benefit from a few more targets, whether you see Zach Pascal, whether you see Jack Stoll get involved, there's a chance that the number three wide receiver is not there, not that. Quez was doing a lot, but just worth a mention. Miles Sanders, how do you feel about him at this point in the season? Uh, I, you know, he is uh, basically like, what's the game plan for the Eagles? The Eagles will come in and they'll say, we're going to run all over this team or, or we're going to throw all over this team. I, I think they could do either in this matchup, so I'm not super confident, but I do know that the Giants have given up a huge number of yards per carry. Uh, running backs, while fantasy-wise, they haven't given up a ton of fantasy points, they don't have 
a stifling run defense. So I think Miles Sanders is in play as, as a good option this week. I'd be happy to throw him in my lineup. Anybody else from this matchup? Is Daniel Jones kind of out with the Philadelphia situation? Yeah, like, it's, he's, he's Dak not... is above Daniel Jones in your mind? Oh, yes. man. Uh, that matchup is so terrifying. I think I'd go. I think I'd go Daniel Jones over Dak and try and get some points. The last name I want to mention, just to keep an eye on him, rookie tight end Daniel Bellinger is back for the Giants. I'm kind of interested after the uh, the nasty eye gouge that he got, but and not you're not expecting Bellinger to to become elite immediately, but right back into his role, five receptions, especially if you're in a PPR league. He he was seeing volume before the eye injury. Came right back into volume, so he's an interesting player to to monitor this week and, and and see if that continues. Well, and Wandale was there even when he was contributing before, and so I think you have more opportunity for Bellinger, the pass rush. I I don't mind that, Mike. All right, all right. The Baltimore Ravens are eight and four. They travel to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers, who are five and seven. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Baltimore minus two and a half. The over under is thirty seven points. I think oh, this is, this is going to be a gross game. It really is. It's going to be a defensive minded. Um, who can you know? You saw last week. It took the final drive of the game for Baltimore to move the ball at all against Denver. This is not the Denver defense, but this is the Steelers at home. This is a team that shuts the run down, and you have Tyler Huntley at quarterback with fewer weapons than than uh, he's had in the past, and the Ravens have had in the past, and I. I think the big question to me, let me start here. Mark Andrews, mm -hmm. I've seen him ranked, you know, as low as like five or six on the week. Is that outlandish? Like, is Mark yeah. Andrews, should he just stay where he belongs at number two behind Kelsey? Uh, yes. I, I think I've got him number three this week. That is not anti Mark Andrews at all. That is pro Hawkinson. Um, but Mark Andrews, we saw him last year with Huntley. Huntley looks to Mark Andrews way more than Lamar Jackson did. Mark Andrews should have an absolutely awesome day. I am not worried at all about his production. I'm more curious where the the second read goes. Is Isaiah likely still involved with Huntley on the field? Is Demarcus Robinson uh, continue just being that first wide receiver target? Uh, I'm not really playing any of those secondary options past Mark Andrews, but I'll have then my... Then why be interested? Well, I'm going to have my eyes on it because Huntley's going to play, I believe, three games. And so next week, Isaiah Likely uh, and Demarcus Robinson could be players that you throw in your lineup. Fine. Good enough reason for me. Sweet. What about the running backs? Just watch. Not interested. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have, it went back. Kenyon Drake led the team in snaps this past week. Gus Edwards was uh, the Gus bust on... Monday Punday for a reason. It was a hot, then, it's a hot fart. And yes, it, it is. Because that could just that could waft right back over to Gus Edwards as the, the primary running back. Uh so I'm not gonna mess around with it. I don't really want it to play anybody in this matchup, but you're going to be stuck playing a few. It, you're you're playing the tight ends. Yeah. Well and and, and, and Najee. You know, you got six teams on by. Like I, I have to play George Pickens in this this Oh, week I'm sorry. Because uh there's a lot of players that are on bye week. So, you know, George Pickens was complaining. Yeah. I mean, profusely about opportunities, which, you know, he had, he didn't get opportunities last week. Going squeaky wheel. I just think that he's going to be out there for every snap. That's, a, you know, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. And, and he is very talented. <laughs> if he has been squeaky wheel screaming at the quarterback to get the ball more, look, they're human beings. He might just throw him the ball a couple more times. So, George Pickens isn't a player I want to play, but I would play him over Deontay Johnson just because his targets have the higher upside. Uh, you know, Are you playing Chark over both guys? I would play Chark over either one, yes. Okay. All right. I'm trying to think of any other decisions you might be making with uh, free agent pickups. Are you playing Juju over both guys? Ooh. Oh, man. Uh, the line is down to 36.5 since we've been talking. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that I, 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 I think I would play Juju. When did the lines? What, it's like we're on the on stock We've got watch. the ticker now. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle is the line ticker. That's that's what I do back here. Yeah, sell, sell, <laughs> sell this game. But uh, yeah, play. But I'm for, playing the Muth. Yeah, I was gonna say Friar Muth's a good play. Andrews is a great play. Everyone else is kind of bad. Najee, I'm sure is going to be in most people's lineup. <laughs>
Game starts of the week. Starts of the week for week 14. Looking at some uh, interesting names. Jason, why don't you kick it off? I'm going to kick it off with Geno Smith against Carolina. There's all this talk this week about what is the running back situation? Who is it going to be? Who cares? <laughs> it's going to be nobody or it's going to be a backup or it's going to be a third string guy. And they're going to throw the ball early and often. This team trusts Geno to do it. He has the most completions per game on first down in the NFL. He's completing an insane 78.6% of passes on first down. The Seahawks offense has been great. Right now, they are an efficient machine. They're third and 15-plus yard pass plays, sixth in expected points per pass attempt. You've got DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett who are going to go ham. He is the quarterback seven on the year. He's got another great matchup against Carolina and no running game to speak of. So I think Geno Smith is a player that um, you just need to continue trusting and playing. It's a great start this week. Mike? I'm going with Jared Goff. Jared, Jared Goff. Goff! Do we have the... Yes. Whenever he's at home and in a plus matchup, he has succeeded at home. Uh, like he has 17 passing touchdowns in just seven games. We talked about that. Minnesota allowing the most passing yards and the highest yards per attempt. That's why we like DJ Chark. Uh, since week five, they ranked 29th in fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position. And my fantasy season is riding with Jared Goff. So this is not just like I'm saying, hey, you know, if, if you're out there, I'd play Jared Goff. No, I am playing Jared Goff, and the my playoff run rests in his his you're, hope, you're hopefully not, his incapable hands. hands. <laughs> you're not just the president. Yes, you're also a member. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna toss Trevor Lawrence right into that pass funnel that the Titans love to throw uh, at their opponent. 31st in passing yards per game allowed. That is the situation for the Titans. They don't give it up on the ground. Trevor Lawrence has been a quarterback one seven times uh, this season, including five of the last seven games. Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, he has weapons that he can lean on. Evan Ingram, Shmevin Schmingram. Yeah. Uh, Trevor Lawrence has just plain been a good quarterback, and uh, if he's out there, I, I would I'd throw him right into your lineup. Yeah, at running back, I'm going with Ezekiel Elliott. Oh, please. Oh, he's going to have a monster game. Please. Over the last three weeks. No Zeke, fades. Zeke has finished running back eight, running back 13, running back eight. I think you could have two top five running backs this week from the same team. Uh, Dallas right now, they're 17-point favorites. In games where a team is favored by 15 points or more, they average 31 rush attempts per game because they're going to – close this game out running the ball and the Texans they're just historically bad at stopping that run out of 416 teams since 2010 the Texans rank 415th in rushing yards per game allowed so uh, both players are great starts this week I'm going with Raheem Mostert for dun, versus dun, dun. the Los Angeles Chargers I know there was a lot of discussion of Jeff Wilson or Mostert which one are you going with and if you have the two and we landed on Jeff Wilson but this is more of a confidence play. I think that they both can be started because the Chargers are just that bad against the running back position. Again, though, we he saw 61% of the snaps this past week. The game has a 51.5 uh, point over under. That's the second highest of the week. And the Chargers, one of the worst run defenses in the NFL, 29th in rushing yards per game allowed, 29th in expected points per rush attempt, 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the running back since week two. They're both an option this week. So I, I think that the uh, giving you the confidence to play if you got Raheem Mostert and you're kind of on the edge, I think at the end of the day, they're both good. Yeah, and like I said, you know, six teams on by. There, you need options at the running back position. My start of the week is a tandem as well. Joe Mixon coming back against Cleveland, a terrible run defense, 30th and run defense grade on PFF, dead last and rush defense on football outsiders. Mixing with a side of P. Ryan. I think this game could very well be the first Burrow victory, and it could be by a wide margin. P. Ryan could supplant Mixon in the second half of this affair, obviously spell him on third downs, maybe even take a drive away if they ease him back in. Both of these players are viable. P. Ryan as a flex, Mixon as a must start. So you're going to mix in some P. Ryan. Hey I'm going to mix in some P. Ryan. Uh, I like it. I like it. I'm going with a stack at wide receiver. 
I've got Geno out there. I'm throwing Tyler Lockett in against Carolina. Carolina has not been able to stop the slot. Uh, 41% of Tyler Lockett's routes have been coming from that location. And also, he's just been unstoppable. Since week five, he's the wide receiver seven. He has a touchdown in five straight games. Don't, you know, Tyler Lockett's someone that you can't hesitate to start anymore. I am going with the wide receiver for Andy's quarterback, Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk's the wide receiver one. He's been fantastic. Uh, it is a little bit streaky, but a 24.5% target share and the fifth most red zone targets. Andy highlighted everything for the passing yards against the Tennessee Titans, uh, allowing the most passing yards and 32nd versus fantasy wide receiver. So I'm very excited for Christian Kirk this week. And plays A. Jones as well. Agreed. Devontae Smith's my wide receiver start of the week against the Giants. It's easy to look at that big, special A.J. Brown game from last week and forget that the previous three weeks he had kind of struggled. Target share-wise, Devontae Smith is right there with A.J. Brown, 28.5% for Brown, 25.6% for Smith. Um, Smith went 5 for 102-1, and one, and we all saw the highlights from A.J. Brown. But, it, you know, Devontae Smith's been great. No Dallas Goddard. You talk about kind of consolidating options in this offense. If Quez Watkins is hurt, eh, it's probably just more Smith and more A.J. Brown. And uh, the Giants ranked 25th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. The matchup, it seems like it could be very tough, but I think it's just going to be very exciting for the Philadelphia wide receiver room. That's good news. I hope Smith has a great game. <laughs> um, I'm going at tight end with Gerald Everett. Mount Everett has been pretty solid this whole year. Against Miami, it's a very, very good matchup. Last week, Everett was very involved. Six targets, five for 80. The matchup is worth chasing because this is the second highest total of the week, 51 and a half uh, points, according to DraftKings Sportsbook. Since week seven, uh, the Dolphins are 30th in schedule-adjusted fantasy points allowed to opposing tight ends. So keep starting Gerald Everett. And the steel underpants tight end of the week, it is Hunter Henry against the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, it's a uh, steel underpants situation because Hunter Henry has essentially had one. Oh, wait, no, two. I'm sorry, two good games this year. Uh, it has not been what you would hope for with Hunter Henry, who was a touchdown machine this pa last year, but the matchup is there. You're going to have to wait uh, for Monday, so you got to stay in those underpants for a while for the payoff. But we had the, the, we had the touchdown two weeks ago. Uh, he's creating a bunch of separation, and the Cardinals dead last versus fantasy tight end since week five. If you have been playing the tight end against Arizona, it has been working out far more than it has not. And with what's going on, like Jacoby Myers' situation for the Patriots, I think that Hunter Henry is in play. All right, my tight end start of the week. I'm going to shine a light on one of the most dynamic young talents at the tight yes, end position. I like it. In the game of football, Chig Okonkwo, tight end. Who? Chig Okonkwo, tight end for the Tennessee Titans. That name is B.A. As is his play. His, he is a yes. really athletic young prospect. Came out from Maryland, ran a four five two forty, which is ninety eighth percentile. He looks like a an oversized wide receiver out there. You may say, "What in the world are you talking about?" Chigakonkwo played fifty eight percent of snaps last week. Was four for sixty eight on the Titans' offense. Traylon Burks injured, unlikely to be out there. And the Jacksonville matchup is a good one. You've this this is happening, right? This is a young tight end who is seeing the field more and more. Uh, Austin Hooper, yes, he's there, but this is a big play tight end. This is a downfield 40, 50 yard type of catch tight end, and I think they're going to need it. Uh, we talked about the pass funnel for the Titans defense. Jacksonville, I think, can keep up, and I think Chig Aconqua will be a very interesting player that we'll talk a lot more about in dynasty context in the future. Unfortunately for all of us here at the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Brooks already has him. Are you kidding me? How do you always I have I told you because he's got 60 roster spots. I don't know how you've manipulated the system to have everybody I ever look at. Does he have commission tools? Does he just go and pick them up not on waivers? I don't just know. adds to roster. Maybe he paid up for like the secret signing, so we never see him make the signing, but they just always end up on the teams. Don't look at my bench spots, how many I have. Yeah. <laughs> don't look. <laughs> I mean, Cheater. 
Uh, it should be interesting, though. I think Tennessee may – I think Hooper and uh, Conquo will both be involved this week. And uh, you can see all of our rankings, the Start, Sit tool, and more on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. If you want access to premium tools, uh, the expanded Start, Sit tool, where, you know, we see it every week. The Start, Sit tool is one of the most used resources on thefantasyfootballers.com. If you want to expand it out to three or four players, you can support the show at jointhefoot.com. Appreciate everybody who went out and voted for us yesterday at Foot Clan Vote as yeah. well. Yeah, um, the Foot Clan is mighty and strong. Keep it up, and has put it on display. So thank you very much. Uh, before we close out, we got to get to the main event. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, one hundred percent guaranteed. Boom, boom, kicker of the week. Last week on Boom Boom Kicker, I was floating in the open waters, utterly blutterbunged. <clears throat> I was picked up like a baby. Was I uncomfortable? Maybe. Burgled by a seafaring kicker. He took me to the mart. I was traded for two cups of farts, taken by one Cameron Dicker. I thought I would, uh, thought I would carry a higher price tag but i i have some notes okay uh number one burgled is one of my favorite words of all time yeah it's it is a for you fantastic word uh but then the fact that in the in the uh the second line there mm -hmm. you brought in the most inside of jokes like a video that was passed around for our company that no one has any idea what you're talking about measuring farts in cups yeah this, sensational this past week jason was enamored by the concept of measuring farts in cups yeah and really any unit of like measurement Volume? yeah because whether like where it's a you teaspoon would like fill of, up with water exactly yes. No, you, that's great. Yeah. Like, but I, was I a, really am disappointed a few milliliters. at my value only being two cups of farts. I, I, I think that's a lot. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's a gas, so it can really spread very far. Yeah, how condensed is that cup? I feel like I, I, should, I should be worth two gallons of farts. Two gallons? Two gallons of farts. But I, I only went for two cups. Yeah, at the mart. Yeah, at the mart, at the <laughs> fart mart. Uh, tomorrow we have Cup of cheese. the rest of the matchups, the Wheel of Shame. Oh, I wonder who it'll be. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow along. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Enjoy the game tonight, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.